徳を虎松に譲って楽隠居したいそしたら普通の女の子になって What's going on, guys? This is Brandon Tang coming back from extensive play of Street Fighter V over the past maybe couple of days. Been really busy as usual, playing, trying to home and trying to keep all my fighting games all together. I'm playing Street Fighter, Killer Instinct, and DOA at the same time, including also with a little bit of Nitro Plus Blasters in the way, but not as much as. Those three game, those three main games coming in. Um, so this is going to be a very special video. I wanted to give my first look impressions of the recent, very recent character that came into DOA but has not released, and her name is Natour Lee. Natour Lee is now. Don't hold me against this, but she is one of the one of the women or one of the girls. That is coming from the many Samurai Warriors games, and this is her pretty much her debut in DOA. And when I first saw this, I immediately、uh, trust me on this immediately loved her. Everybody on the PlayStation Network was asking me questions about being wary and telling me that she may not be good or she not be that cool. But holy crap, holy crap, guys! Like you have no idea, you have no idea how much love I got for this girl right here, and how excited I'm waiting for her to come out right now. So the deal about it is that I heard she has no release date as of now, but that would be, be that would just be a big lie as the deal as Tecmo Koe streamed. Their latest, their latest character that is actually that actually looks pretty much finished as of now, and while they're also showing off the Tor Lee, I guess they were showing off DOA Extreme 3 PS Vita version, and how the graphics compare to the PS4 version as well. But besides Extreme 3,、um, the Tor Lee just, oh my gosh, kicks. Kicks, man. The kicks are real. I think the kicks are even more real than Rig. She is amazingly fast. We're talking Alpha 152 kick speed fast. Now the thing about it is, is that her kick speed is very fast in this game, from what it looks like. But what I can also tell, when I see one of her drawbacks, is her her punch game is pretty damn weak. Now I say that because her punches are a lot slower, much much slower looking than what her than what her kicks are actually doing. So I don't know what to say about that. But the thing about it is,、um, Natori has a bunch of different mix-ups. So you go into one string, into a different, which might be mid mid low, into another low, into a launching high. Which is really crazy if you can tell by the video right here that it's just super ridiculous.、Um, her main game, like I said, is the kicks. This is her one big plus side. She is very strong and very fast, and those kicks can add up to really high damaging combos. I can, I really cannot say from this video that.、Um, Uh, what what to say? What to say? I really can't say that her kicks are gonna be safe or safe or unsafe on block. It's really hard to say because most of the developers who were playing this game, or most of the game testers who were playing on the stream here, they seem to only they seem to only do one move, and none of them. None of them really try to block any of it. Most of them try to like spam counter or something, or try to stagger escape, which looks really crazy impossible, or they're just not lucky at all, you know.、Um, but again, her kicks go from high, mid, into low. Her mids look crazy. Her mids just look amazingly crazy. 
And another drawback with that is the, um, what I want to say is that what she might suffer from as maybe, I'll give it two to four weeks of playing, playing her after she comes out. My biggest setback with Notori Lee, most likely, will be that most of her good stuff is mid-kicks. Mid-launchers, mid-kicks, mid-critical or mid-kick uh, critical bursts, and just, you know, the rig stuff, basically. I'm pretty sure by now that most of the, most of the players who play the ninjas or other top-tier characters know how to counter rig because rig's really good stuff is from low to mid kick launchers or kick launchers or mid into high. And that's the sad part too because most of his really good stuff becomes really predictable in a short amount of time that the opponent figures you out. So putting this idea of Reek's kicks into a really faster character such as Natora herself, it's really kind of skeptical on whether she might be good or not and whether or not her punch game still might not be still good either. The punch game on her is very slow. Of course, what would you expect from high to mid? Her little strings are here and there, and you know, this is just first look impressions. I'm pretty sure the, the developers and game testers who were in the stream right now didn't really fully exploit or expose her full move list as as it is. They only expose how crazy fast she really was. And it's so funny because she's got Alpha Alpha 152 kick speed that can go into many multiple strings. Sometimes the same, sometimes different. And that's that's pretty much what why I love her so damn much is because She's a fast counter, faster than Rig. I bet you, faster than fucking Rig, just from telling what the video, what the video shows you here. In which, um, I did be apologize for two things. Um, for one, I did be apologize for the qual for the quality of this video. Even, although this was totally directly ripped out from a stream, and I also apologize for not saying the guy's name. <laughs> The guy's name on the channel is um, is it Ju Jewish Pay Jewish Pay Gaming, Jewish Jewish Pay's Gaming, yeah, like Jewish Pay's Gaming was the first one I saw on the YouTube links that was in every uh, article as far as silicon siliconia and shoryuken.com. Sorry if I mispronounced any of those names, but uh, yeah. The YouTube channel's name and the quality of this, although most understandable. Um, besides all that, besides Ntor Lee, it seems that also the stream, the stream guys over here, they were showing off the brand new collaboration between Samurai Warriors and DOA with these really amazing costumes. Uh, they didn't show, I don't think they showed off Hayabusa. If if there's more gameplay footage of this that leaked or something or came from the stream, you guys should let me know and I'll cover that. But as far as the costumes go, I think they only show Kasumi, Ayane, and Hayate. I don't think there was anything as far as the Samurai Warriors costume for uh, Hayabusa. But besides all that, um, again, Atorly, really, really strong. And this is why I was telling all the people that you should probably get really excited for her because she is going to be her own original fighting style. And what I mean by that is her own original fighting style doesn't consist of other DOA clones or other DOA styles. No, she has one that was just ripped from her own game. The stuff she does in the Samurai Warriors games, they implemented it into DOA just what, what it seems perfectly. Now, don't hold me against it, because I never played Samurai Warriors, but I've seen, I seen a couple uh, PS4 gameplay videos on it, and her moves just just look so, so amazing. Um, the other thing about it is, with, with her, what I mean with the original style, um, the DLC characters I was just not impressed with. I think the last 
true f different fighting style character came from Marie Rose, and she was like the first prime <laughs> DLC character to come to to come to DOA around. I believe it was Ultimate. Ultimate was the one that brought out Marie Rose first, and why I really did like her. She wasn't my character for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe she's gone top tier. Maybe she's a bit overused, but regardless, um, no complaints there. I think I think why I didn't play Rose as much is because I think I wanted to stick with Rig and Momoji and just try to flesh them out as much as I could, uh, whether I was playing lobbies or ranked matches every single day. But... Um, yeah, Rose was the very first original, uh, original style character to come as DLC. Um, as far as Raido, Raido to me, Raido to me seemed the same when I played DOA Dimensions on the 3DS when he was a playable character, even though he was a boss character. Um, another one was just why I do like Honoka too. Uh, Honoka is just a preset Mokujin, and preset Mokujin is basically a uh, Mokujin from Tekken. <laughs> if you have, if you guys haven't played Tekken, you know what Mok it, Mokujin is basically. He is basically the best training dummy I have ever seen in any fighting game, and this training dummy consists of ripping out any any character's uh, fighting style in Tekken and using it against you, and it's always random each different round. So, but what I mean by that is, um, Honoka just had a, Honoka was just Mokujin, but she was given her own move, move list as well, so her move list consisted of many different fighters from many, many of the fighter, or many different fighter styles in, uh, DOA 5, so she probably did Ayane, she did Ayane's kick, she, uh, she did Rake's kick in her, uh, Brad Wallen Drunken Stance, which is also a thing. She did Hitomi's uh, one, two, three punch, charge punches, I believe. I don't hold me against that. I don't know. Well, I see it, but I can't tell you what move it is. I don't look at the move list. I only, I only see, visually see what uh, move she ripped off from. Oh, she was just, she was just Mokujin, but with a preset move list, you know. Uh, another, another DLC character I was not impressed with was obviously Phase Four. Phase 4, while most top tier players like her, including, I, I have to say I do like her too, but it's just another clone, and on top of that, she's basically Kasumi's, she's basically a substitute for Kasumi players, and a much better one in fact, because most of her strings, she can just tell, she just can cancel teleport into, which is crazy, and it seems a lot better th than Kasumi. You know, um, besides that, now, like, my first impressions, oh, and by the way, like, this stage, man, I'm glad they brought back the stage. It's, a uh, if, you know, if you watch the video, of course, which is happening right now, it's Azuchi. Azuchi is one of the DOA3 stages, one of the very classic ones, and I have to say, this one is not too bad looking. I was um, I was a very little disappointed with Lost World and Force because Lost World looked a little too green. It wasn't as spacious as DOA three, DOA or as uh, where DOA three had it. I think it had a little big bigger scale with DOA three. You didn't start you didn't start off as in a very tiny spatial cliff like you do in last round. You had a bit more space in DOA three. Um, that in the forest was just a little too orangey for my taste. But I guess it's different opinions and different visualizations. Because I can hear you guys saying that, well, Brandon, the these stages were great. And they got improved over time in Ultimate when they, came, when they first came out. Because if you look at DOA 3 and Lost World and you, can, you combine Forest and Lost World, Lost World and Forest look very grayed out. But I don't know, something about it has um, very, very natural lighting. I think the forest one had natural lighting, but I could agree that Lost World was very grayed out. But for some reason, I still hold that nostalgia to my heart, 
and say that 4 still looks a lot better in DOA 3 than uh, DOA 5 Ultimate. Uh, again, Azuchi looks amazing. Um, was not impressed with the little strange transition. It's it's very short. It's not as long as the um, DOA 3 one. And see, these, these small things matter because DOA 3 had transitions longer than any any type of cutscene you would see in a typical game because you will watch your opponent fall down the stairs for at, at least a good 45 seconds before continuing the fight and seeing how five did it it's a, it's the usual you get knocked you get knocked out of the, the building and then into a different pan or camera shot and then you see your opponent's character fall and then that's just it to where it was very cinematic back in DOA 3 with how you got launched out of that building and you just kept seeing your character falling. There was no cuts in between. It was just straight up. There was an angle of which the character fell and it hit it and it didn't cut anything out. That's what, that's what I mean. Um, besides all that, no, the costumes look great and I'm going to say Notorly is definitely my bay. Like... The first thing I'm going to do is player. Player training mode straight up. I won't go into lobbies until maybe two days after, but it really depends. She's just an amazingly potentious or potential character here. Her mix-ups are crazy from high to low, <laughs> two lows into a mid. And then sometimes she can go into the same string over and over just to trick you. And what I also noticed if you guys have seen here, she's got an aerial command command thing where she kicks you constantly and then hits you back down to the ground, which I thought was really cool. It's got to be a special command, like a quarter circle while you're doing a, a, a kick in the air or something. It's kind of like a, a combo chain grab or something like that. You know what I mean. Combo chain grab, yeah. Like the Azuna drop. Um, another thing what, very interesting about Notori Lee was or charge and they didn't really go they didn't really go too much in depth with her power blow i'm surprised they didn't show off her power blow or not her power blow her power launcher uh they did show off her power blow on me on that they they showed off her power blow that's what that's what made it that's what made her combo into her charge stance a uh, special kick don't hold me against that no this they showed everything off her charge move her charge move looks scary it looks very scary because the thing about this charge move is, like most characters, um, when they go into a charge state or a charge punch, Li Fang cannot cancel her charge punch. She cannot sidestep it. Once she commits to that charge punch, and I'm sure most players, most smart players do, she cannot sidestep it. And if the other smarter players see it coming, they can just normally get up and counter a mid punch because it is counterable in mid punch. But um, her charge move, when you see that gust of wind flow from her feet, it is amazing. It's It looks really good. Well, regardless of the stream quality, I'm pretty sure it looks really amazing. Um, the thing about that charge move is it's cancelable. So, like, if you thought she was scary, just wait until you see her charge potential. Her charge can cancel into a crazy throw. Or you sidestep it. No, not sidestep it. You can just freaking uh, just cancel it with square most likely. You could just hit square, cancel her charge uh, stance, and then go into a grab or trick your opponent and go into a different like attack stream. You know what I'm saying? Um, what was so really godlike about this chick is that when she did her charge attacks... She got a uh, like a cannon drill like attack that she can go into and it hits you three times. Doesn't do hard knockdown. It's not like Ayane's. Uh, it's not like oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it cannon drill because that's what it looks like. It looks like a cannon drill from here. <laughs> it doesn't do hard knockdown and doesn't do that great of damage, but it does hit three times, and it looks like it may be really hard to counter because it's consistent as fuck. Uh, you're always put into like this very medium uh, stun state. Not a heavy one, but something enough that's like a little bit guaranteed. And the thing about that is, is that her cannon drill that hits you three times, 
doesn't do that enough damage, so I think it's just used for like as a uh, a get end tool. So if you if you see if you see your opponent trying to do something, you can just whiff punish them with the uh, with her notoriously cannon drill. Hits them three times, you can go for another setup or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, another thing was her her charge stance does like this crazy. Uh, it starts off, I think it combos low or combos mid kick, but what the stream, what the guys that did on the stream was, um, they launched, I think it was high Te Arayani, uh, uh, up in the air, and they did the, they did this crazy, crazy, like, win, win kick attack that did, like, 30% damage, and that was only combo in the air. And I would assume that her charge stance does not take that long to, how should I say, start up, buffer, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't take that long to get stuff going. And it's not like a Neo Tengu or Tengu uh, back, what was it, her, her uh, charge, her charge win. Yeah, it's nothing like that where it takes up like maybe three to four frames just to charge up fully, you know what I'm saying? Because within those four, when it, within those three or four frames, even if it's slow startup, uh, an opponent, especially in a game like this, can easily just grab Neo Tengu or counter that wind attack, even though there's no counter punish right after it. It's just a side, it's just a normal sidestep. Um, another exciting thing for her, gosh, like, she's just... I don't know what to say. She's crazy potential, and I may be I may be looking I may be looking biased here and saying that her punch game sucks. Maybe you guys are different spectators, but her game her real game right now is where it's where it's at. It's the kicks. Her kicks go into different strings, and that's what blows my mind. Um, the also, the one thing I may also fear from just looking at Nar Nartora is her they didn't expose her move list yet but i also hope besides her very fast predictability and tele sometimes telegraphed uh kicks and moves kind of like rigs um i really hope that she doesn't have a move list like momoji or rachel because momoji and rachel suffer suffer from predictability um a lot of players who use Momoji and Rachel have to have to do a lot of patience, and if they have to counter, they have to they have to do counter throws. Counter throws with Rachel do tons of damage, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys seen that since Ultimate came out. And with her air grabs, she can just punish severely. Uh, given Rachel has Rachel has her default sidestep and she has her special sidestep. And her special side step can go into a mid mid uh, punch launcher or a low sweep, which is really nice. But again, it's a lot of patience because you cannot do the same move over and over again. I think Rachel has less moves than Momoji, and that's saying something. I think Momoji has 56 or 58 moves, and Rachel only has like 40, 49, 49, I believe. But uh, again, her power makes up for that, and I would say if you're patient enough, it also makes up for that. They're not bad characters, but they suffer from not having enough moves, you know what I mean? Um, I think that's about it. You know, they showed off the costumes. I think my favorite one for Notori Lee is the kitty cat, which is really nice. And I think the really adorable one... Now hear me say this. Hear me say adorable while wow, this game is like the anime sexualization game. Now I honestly think the Taurus Lee's costumes, uh, while wow, some of them also of them don't look all that great. They're just like color swaps, different color um patterns like blue. I think I think I saw purple, not too sure. Purple might be a thing. <laughs> don't hold me on that. Um, but no, my favorite costumes are the cat one and her, uh, bathrobe one, because the bathrobe one, she has, like, this cute little ducky and this little, and this little, uh, extra towel on her head. I thought it was really cute. Um, but yeah. No, I think that's it for Notori Lee, like, this character, man, 
She comes on March 17th, but a, a lot of people are saying that she does not have a release date as of now. But, I mean, come on. Like, fighting games are happening. Uh, I think a new bridge and branch of fighting games are coming out. Uh, Guilty Gear Revelator doesn't come until, like, June. But <laughs> games such as, like, Pokemon Tournament, uh, Mortal Kombat XL, D uh, Dead or Alive 5 coming out with a Tori Lee, Street Fighter 5 coming out with a new March update. And... You know, you can't really you can't really fight it. Even Killer Instinct season three, they haven't announced a release date, but there is they said that it's gonna come around around March and I'm really excited for that. Along with um along with what was it? Along with basically Killer Instinct merchandise, which I'm really excited about, you know? I love the figurines and stuff, but that's for a different video. Uh yeah, this is my first impressions with Natora Lee. And Oh my god, like, she's so fucking cool. Her charge attacks are ridiculous. Her mix-ups are ridiculous. And she can just mix you up very good. It's another character where you have to play her very carefully and reek like Because if you play, if you see me in my play, including a couple, couple DOA players that see me play, you know I throw out that mid-kick a lot. It's, man... It's such a bad habit. I don't think a lot of people know, but you know, my mid -kick, the mid kicks on rig are unsafe, and I have to start mixing it up more because I've been so spoiled by winning, that to the point where I actually hate it, and where I'm trying to find new players on lobbies and trying to learn myself, and trying to how to play uh, against my own bad habits, and also I'm trying to play against rig because nobody really does anything, nobody really plays them, you know. Anyways, guys, this is my first impressions of Natori Lee on Dead or Life Live last round. Look forward to her coming March 17th, and look forward to more DOA videos in the future. Peace, guys.